Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the market and some updates that we saw in earnings. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, very concerning things in my opinion. And so we're just going to go ahead and talk about that. First thing I want to pull up though <clears throat> is we're going to look at my market crash portfolio. Now I do want to make it very clear. Um, the uh, All of my portfolios are down. Okay. I want to make sure I'm very clear on that. Uh, my Roth IRA is down, my custodial account, my individual accounts, basically everything is still down. I'm not going to act like I'm just killing the market right now. So let's just make sure we keep that in mind. Uh, thankfully, I'm not down 50% like some you know other YouTube creators and some of the grifters that I often talk about in this channel. Um, <clears throat> but because I mostly buy the S&P 500, I am down anywhere from 19, 22%, whatever it is. But the bottom line is, guys, we're going to go ahead and pull up my market crash portfolio. Now, the market crash portfolio has absolutely been killing it. You guys know I typically tend to just buy the S&P 500 and chill, but I did decide to dabble in individual stocks only because stocks have crashed so much, and I'm very happy with that decision. As a matter of fact, if we look at my market crash portfolio, remember, this is a new portfolio that I started like a month ago, and I specifically started it because, you know, market crashes are actually the best times uh, to buy stocks, you know, so... I started the market crash portfolio, and if we look right here, you can see that I am up 13% uh, in Meta, which is Facebook. I am up 1% in Bank of America. I'm up an astounding 16% in Amazon, which is amazing because I literally bought these stocks like maybe like a week ago, so that's actually pretty cool. I'm up 12% in Disney, and I am up 6% in VOO, which is the SP 500. Now, I do want to give some updates, and the reason why is because I strongly do believe that the way that earnings are looking, uh, I'm not so optimistic about earnings next week. I actually do think think that earnings could possibly be bad and obviously I could always be wrong and if I'm wrong great I already uh, bought some stocks so if they go up cool but if I'm wrong and stocks start to tank and go back you know the SP 500 goes back to 3700 uh, I will do some buying again that's just kind of the way I've been playing this thing not trying to time the market but at certain key levels I'm perfectly fine with buying stocks all right, so the stock market just opened and Snapchat is down an astounding 35%. It's starting to get really scary for Snapchat. I mean, literally, this stock is down uh, 83% within the last year. And at one point, uh, this stock was sitting at uh, $82 a share, and now it's at 10 I mean, this thing is literally heading the penny stock territory. So that's very scary. But let's actually talk about these earnings. And we are going to talk about Snapchat uh, in this as well. But first, let's start off with Verizon Wireless. So Verizon Wireless in their earnings call said, we expect inflationary pressures to accelerate uh, in the second half of the year and have an impact on profitability and earnings. Now, remember, this is what we said on this channel. This is why I was extremely fearful for the rest of the years, because what I have said on this channel is that I believe that the market is pricing in uh, companies to have a bad Q2 earnings, but what if they have a bad earnings in Q3 and Q4? What if this recession gets really, really bad? That could really turn into some uh, uh, huge problems, and that could be very bad for the stock market. That's my main worry. Now, obviously, right now, I see the S&P 500 just hit 4,000. That is insane. <laughs> Never thought I'd see that this year, but that just goes to show you. you market's a crazy place. It's very irrational. Um, Verizon Wireless also said about inflation that uh, they are seeing pressures uh, within their cost structure, most notably on labor uh, costs, utilities, and transportation, and logistics expenses. This is what they said in the conference call. Moving on to Snapchat, which again is down 35%. They are absolutely uh, getting mud, as she wrote, and I feel bad for anybody who owns that stock, but hey, it's the stock market. Snapchat said that some advertisers continue to face supply chain disruptions and labor shortages, and many others were uh, contending with rising costs amid record inflation, which has led to cuts in spending on advertising. That's not good because that's literally what that's what they do. Uh, Snapchat also said that it was significantly slow hiring. Again, that's that recession indicator coming in, uh, that they would invest in their advertising business and that they would find new sources of revenue in order to grow at a faster pace. Now, they did announce something where they're coming out with like this $3.99 package or something like that. I saw something like that. So they are working on that, but that revenue is their main source of income, and that's the issue here. Um, Snapchat also added... Uh, I'm sorry, no, this is Verizon. This is Verizon's earnings call again. Uh, Verizon added fewer than expected monthly phone subscribers in the second quarter. Uh, this is a sign that red hot inflation has begun impacting its business. This is where it starts to get scary if we start to see inflation and the recession fears and everything going on in the economy right now start to affect these companies even more. 
And so anyway, there you guys have it. I will be bringing you more updates, so definitely make sure to stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, there you guys have it. That'll go ahead and conclude today's video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.